It is the wee hours of the morning. We are in Occupon in downtown Dripping Springs and we are doing things. What are we doing today? We are going to make uh, the wash for the single malt. Okay, and the wash is what exactly? What well, I'm making beer. Okay. Um, and I would call it beer without hops. A wash or beer is what we're going to distill the pull the alcohol from that we're gonna age in the barrel? Yes, we're gonna take that grain that we milled um, and we're going to create a sugary liquid called warp. We're gonna put it in this fermenter right here. And we're gonna add yeast. Is that the best one? I only want the best one. This is the best one. All right. Because it's the only one that's clean right now. <laughs> that makes it the best. <laughs> so now this is a hot liquor tank. Um, so hot water tank yeah. <laughs> for, you, for you, hot water. <laughs> so one thing we have to do in the winter time is preheat the bash tun. So because it got so cold overnight, yeah. I'm gonna put hot water in there just for a little while. Let it warm up a bit dump that. So I'm trying to hit a, a certain temperature, which is optimal for producing sugars from okay. the starches in that grain. We're gonna start at 146, 147, and then I'm gonna raise it a little bit. How are we doing, Dave? We're doing great, Rex. An empty tank, so we're gonna see what it looks like. So now I'm just stirring the grain I poured into the water that was in there. Ooh, that was a peated one. I smell that smoke. And I want to make sure all of the grain is exposed to the water because you have clumps of things together. Then those enzymes keep to get in there and break down the starches and sugars. So right now, those enzymes in the grain are converting the starches to sugars. As soon as that warm water hits there, they start working. They're, they're enzymes, so beta amylase is the first one yep. that's working, it works at a lower temperature. The higher the temperature goes, the faster those enzymes work, but then eventually they become denatured. And so that's why you gotta be careful. There's a very narrow range, really. We're trying to stay around 147, 148 right now, let beta amylase do its job, and then I will bring the temperature up a little bit, closer to the end. It's pretty cool. This is the fullest it's ever been. <laughs> we did it! <laughs> Breaking records already. Oh, so smoky. That's what it smells like bacon. Yeah. <laughs> now we will let it do its thing. Let it do its thing and uh, we go get tacos. What do we got going right now? It's time to Vorloff. Come look, so you can see those enzymes have been busy at work converting the starches to sugars. Yeah. So what we're gonna do now is um, we're gonna run off wort from the bottom of the mash tun. It's gonna come up through this arm, through the sight glass, and trickle down back over the top. Okay. What we're doing is clarifying it, getting bits of grain out of it, yeah. and setting the grain bed to act as a filter so when we run off into the boil kettle, it'll be clear. Yeah. And that's what we're gonna pump back over the top and eventually kind of filter out. We use the green bed as its own filter. Yeah, so you can see it running out here. Yeah. What's it taste like? It's very sweet. This is good. Oh yeah, an Odie sugar. Yeah. Not yet, well, there it is. I see it. This is uh, sparging, so we're gonna put. So we sparge after we've warloft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, it's got that really hot water to strip off the sugar that's stuck to the bits of grain. Okay. <laughs> Eventually, the uh, levels of liquid will be the same in both tanks. Yeah. Then I'll turn the pump on. We'll start pumping it over. It went in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you tasted it. Are you vaping them? <laughs> <laughs> See how it changes. Even oh, sweeter, wow. sweeter. Yeah. So that's like that's the first one. Ooh. Yeah. The so sweet smoke is just like right. bursting out of there. Yeah, that's pretty good. So 
So um, all of the wort has been run off from the mash tun yeah. into the boil kettle. I'm bringing it up to a boil so we get hot break. Hot break. Hot, hot break, yeah. So break. these proteins are gonna kind of clump together and eventually they'll sink to the bottom. Yeah. And so we're gonna leave those behind. What's that? It's really uncomfortable looking at the camera. <laughs> Can you feel the thousands of people just yes. looking at you right now? Yes. And you know. It's really uncomfortable. You know I'm absolutely using that footage. It's <sighs> hateful, hateful, he's hateful. <laughs> what the hell, Dave? Dave? Freaking where's Dave? Our, gosh, Dave, where's our beer? Where's I, our breakfast beer? I was promised breakfast beer. Okay, once I get to stable here, we'll have a breakfast beer. All right, you bust those balls, you get us beer. That's right. <laughs> 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 Alright, what are we doing? We're gonna do a whirlpool. A whirlpool? Pump that wort that's in the kettle. Yeah. And it's gonna create it's a whirlpool. whirlpool. This is a pump, um, that's parasitic acid. Yeah. And so we're gonna use that to sanitize everything. While we're doing the whirlpool and the rest, John has been hydrating the yeast. You can hydrate it directly in the wort. Yeah. But it's harder on the yeast. So okay. if you give it a little head start, just hydrate it. Just yeah. proof it like you proof it for bread. I mean, you can just throw yeast in, in flour and water and make bread. Right. If you go ahead and take that time to proof the yeast, kind of bring it out of dormancy, it tends to perform better. This is where the wort is gonna come through after it's been cooled down. And so actually the yeast is already in there. John will turn the pump on out there. But first thing that's gonna run through here is more of that pure parasitic acid. So that's why it goes to drain here. So it doesn't kill the yeast. That's right, exactly right. Through. Once it's wort, right. then I'll close that and open this and we'll start filling the ferment. is a blow off arm, so as CO2 is being produced, it's yeah. gonna go up through here, down, and into this bucket of sand. Oh yeah. And it'll bubble, once it's fermenting, it'll bubble just like this. I just turned on the glycol, so this is the temperature we want to uh, ferment at. Yeah. That's the temperature right now in that tank. This above your head, there's a glycol chiller on the other side of the building, so this is a glycol loop. A glycol loop? It's like food grade antifreeze, think of it that oh, way. Oh, okay. Yeah. A solenoid opens. So it flows into, there's a jacket around this? Yes, a wall. The glycol flows in and it will cool it down. Because oh. we want to start this yeast out at 67. Oh, nice. So you can hear the pump outside really loud right now. It's pumping out the wort. It's coming through this hose and into the fermentation tank where it's going to meet the yeast. Break down the sugars, turn them into alcohol. A week later, Tommy will drive the tote over here and, and we'll transfer the... Tommy! <laughs> <laughs> they were glad to help us out, Deb. Yes. For no other reason than we made this entire brewery smell like bacon. <laughs> so much bacon. You're welcome. <laughs> Smells amazing. <laughs> so, we saw the process of creating a whiskey wash. Yes. Thank you, Dave Nehemiah. I didn't get to go. Yeah, you didn't want to wake up that early. I just no, I had class. I just care more about whiskey than Daniel does. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> You're sleeping in, watching your your old crusty man cartoons. It's so old, like it's, that's the cartoons back in the day where they were all racist. <laughs> <laughs> It's finally done-ish. Yes, I was uh, just admiring it. Yes, this is the wall of magnificence that has been coming for a long time. The Magnificent Bastards in the Patreon. I think we have chiefs, knights, barons, earls, demigods right here 
The yeah. other thing I want to change right now, it's too far away, I want those to go straight up. And, and the next thing is? The Bastard's Bar. The Bastard's Bar. Yeah. So this is going to be full of Knights, Barons, Earls. We're yep. That's the next project we're yep. filling up. But there's going to be a few new things. A title for Whiskey Tribe Legends. This is the legend. whole thing. We're gonna put the legends' names up here. This is the legends' landing on the rail facing the bar. These are people that have been for a long time working behind the scenes tirelessly to help keep the whiskey tribe fun and cool. Like um, Terry Dolan, like Dennis Murphy. You guys don't even know who he is, but he helps yeah. a tremendous amount. Like Ian, for as long as a legend is actively contributing their expertise and their time to the group, they're gonna have their name on the landing here. Now, a legend isn't something that you're ever guaranteed to get. It's not a title that can be bought. When a legend needs to retire, maybe they get like a new addition to the family and their free time is all of a sudden very limited. Uh, retired legends are gonna go up under here. So retired Like for legend, example, Thomas Graves, Thomas retired Graves. legend. Provided some amazing, brilliant artwork. The Boosh. The Boosh, retired legend. Yes, he's written some amazing, like fantastic articles for the mm -hmm. tribe. As anybody knows that spent um, any meaningful time in the, the Whiskey Tribe social pages, mm -hmm. uh, we always try and keep things whiskey related, but there's some exceptions. And that's um, if there's an amazing moment to celebrate, like you got a new job, like a new addition to the family, right. that is worthy of a toast, a congratulatory attaboy, mm -hmm. then that's you know, fair game, absolutely post that stuff. Uh, and then the other thing is, opposed to raise a glass to honor the fallen, a loved one, a friend, or family member who has recently passed. And every once in a while we were able to catch it and comment on it in yeah. the episode, but... The Whiskey Tribe needed something a little bit more... Um, Substantial. Yes. And permanent. Yes. Well, we got reached out to by uh, our friend Thomas Elmer, and he said, you know, it'd be really cool if we could create some kind of memorial wall. I mentioned it to Rex, and we started thinking about it, and we decided, you know what would be perfect for that? It's a west-facing wall, and it's the tallest wall in the whole building. Up here, along where all of the windows are, going from the bottom of the windows up to the top of the roof, we're going to hang names yep. that are going to be interconnected mm -hmm. and they're basically going to catch the wind and catch the sunset. That's right. Every single day. The timing of this actually, it, it coincided with the very unfortunate event in um, A Magnificent Bastard's life. Yeah. James Roundtree, uh, his little girl, uh, recently passed away. It was uh, unforeseen. Mm -hmm. Emma Roundtree. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Emma Roundtree, the very first name that's going to go on the Whiskey Tribe Remembrance. James was telling me a bit about her, and I'm not going to share it here, but she was very loved. Mm -hmm. James and his family just, uh, they're going through some um, financial complications with this big event in their life. So we don't do GoFundMe stuff, but because it coincided with the memorial, if you want to check out uh, James, uh, his GoFundMe page, mm -hmm. it's linked in the description. Um, it's the only time we're going to do that. In the not distant future, we're going to figure out the best way to collect the, the names of your friends and family members that you would like to honor on the Whiskey Tribe Remembrance. And in the comments, let us know what's the criteria we should use because if we asked for everybody you knew that ever died, then we would fill up this wall and every square inch of the building. Yeah, and, and the property, really. The pro I mean, figure that we've got, what, 12,000 people in the yeah. Facebook tribe, and right. if they all did one, we couldn't put them up here. Give us your, su your suggestions for what the criteria should be. We're clumsy and, and out of their depth when it comes to feeling. feelings. <laughs> <laughs> but it's definitely something that needs to happen, yeah. and we're happy to do it for this community. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>